Hello, I'm Nels from Virtual and I'm here to talk to you about a therapy that has probably more than 15 to 20 benefits, more than any other therapy in the world. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot get it in a pill it, and it is um, available to everybody, but not very many people actually take it. So, but a, a basically a therapy that can decrease your body fat, your, increase your muscle mass, increase your energy levels, increase your bone density, decrease your cholesterol, improve your blood sugar, uh, improve your mood, and many other factors. And that therapy is exercise. Unfortunately, most people in the United States are not exercising. Exercise not only makes you look good, feel good, make you healthy, but it also provides a kind of a cushion as we age uh, and get, um, and get uh, a lot more frail. It prevents a lot of those problems in aging. So let's talk about the different types of exercise. Um, the first one is cardiovascular or aerobic exercise. Aerobic meaning air, oxygen, is something that brings more oxygen into your uh, bloodstream by increasing your heart rate. Anything that requires a strenuous activity like uh, dancing, uh, walking briskly, uh, running, jogging, um, and many other things that can increase your, your heart rate. Um, start with, you know, if you haven't really gone into an exercise program, you want to lose some weight and some fat, start by just walking around the neighborhood, you know, once a day for 20, 30 minutes, walk your dog more than you usually do. Um, start that way. And if you're more and more, if you have more experience in, in exercise, um, just make sure that you, um, when you go into the gym, you use uh, low impact uh, machines like an uh, uh, elliptical trainer, basically you're moving your arms, uh, I'm sorry, your, uh, your feet in a lift, in elliptical manner, and make sure you sweat. You're actually doing 30 to 40 minutes of exercise, you're sweating, you're burning some calories, you're increasing your body temperature, your metabolism. Um, 20 to 30 minutes, as, as I said, a day, three to four times a week, you know, it's a good enough program to get you to lose some uh, fat and improve uh, metabolic rate and, and, and burn more calories. The next exercise is a progressive resistance exercise or weight training, resistance exercise in general, uh, that's how some people refer it to, in which you're basically resisting a weight. Could be your body weight, like if you're doing a, a push-up, or it could be using machines or free weights uh, or, or even elastic bands. And uh, you can do a lot of that at home. I'm gonna have a few videos um, that you can watch for a home-based program, or you can actually go to the gym, and most people like myself, I, I enjoy going to a structured uh, environment like the gym. It could be a little intimidating for some people. When you get into the gym, before you go to the gym, prepare yourself. Um, um, if you have to um, rest a little bit to feel better after work, uh, have a pre-workout uh, snack, something that has a little bit of carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, and a little bit of protein and fat, like peanut butter and um, an apple, um, have a banana and peanut butter, a uh, bunch of nuts and, and an apple, for instance. And that will give you enough you know, energy to, um, to basically burn at the gym too. Um, some people like uh, energy boosters. Um, you just be careful because it can increase your blood pressure and that's not a good thing if you have a heart condition. I like coffee, so I do usually drink my cup of coffee before going to the gym and then head there. Um, once you go to the gym, make sure you concentrate on a few things. Concentrate on uh, compound exercises of the major uh, muscle groups. Compound exercise is something like, for instance, a bench press. You're bench pressing with a dumbbell or a bar or a machine, and you're working out where your arms, biceps, a little bit of triceps, shoulders, and, and your chest. One single exercise is doing all that for you. So you concentrate on that while your energy is, is at its highest. Some people like to warm up in a treadmill or an elliptical trainer beforehand. Um, if a warm up meaning just five to 10 minutes, I really believe cardiovascular exercise should be done, if you're gonna do it together, should be done after weight training, not before. You need to maximize your energy at, uh, at weight training. Um, and also, they're very, very important to know to set the weight setting in the machines or, 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 or weights um, to an optimum level so that you can grow muscle. And research has shown that uh, doing repetitions anywhere from eight to 12 reps, uh, and no more than that, weights that actually get you to what we call maximum momentary uh, muscular failure. Um, let's say you grab a 20, 
pound uh, dumbbell, you do a bicep curl, and if you can do more than 10 to 11, try to increase the, 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 the weight until you cannot really do more than that. You're basically almost hardly finishing the 10 thread. That's really where most of the muscle hypertrophy uh, happens in the last two to three reps. The first reps are basically warm up reps, really. Um, before you actually do a, a set, and you can do three sets uh, per body part, three to four times a week. Uh, but before you do a body set, a real heavy body set, do a warm up, a really light one. So you can get, you know, your body pumping and warm up and your neurological path in your brain actually activated to do the exercise. And then do a heavy set. Heavy is um, a very subjective word. Could be heavy, could be 10 pounds for somebody, could be 100 pounds for another person that is more uh, conditioned. So you know that heavy, the definition of heavy, is anything that brings you to 10 reps at momentary muscular failure where you cannot do another rep, as I said before. That's heavy for you, whatever that is. And hopefully as you get stronger, your, your setting will increase and your weight uh, strength uh, will increase too. Uh, if you have no access to a gym, as I said, you can do crunches, uh, push-ups at home, squats at home, although I think uh, most people need structure and, and gym access to. Uh, full range of motion. Don't forget, and I see people at the gym doing exercises the wrong way. If you're going to do a bicep curl, just to, for an example, just make sure you have full range, meaning you're going through the full range of motion, not, you know, you can do some partial uh, uh, bicep curls after the fact, you know, just to pump up. And to make sure, too, that you contract and squeeze whatever muscle part you're working on. Let's say in bicep curl, you go up here and you're feeling it. You're putting all your mind in it. Exercise is really like a meditation uh, uh, process where you should put all your focus on that. So stop thinking about things. Get away from all your problems. You put all your, all your focus there and pump, squeeze, contract. And then go down. I, sometimes I do it more than once. And that way you're actually pumping that blood in and also it's really good to feel that pump. Um, and leave the secondary, the smaller muscle, uh, muscle groups for later. Like, uh, you know, you're gonna do a tricep pull down. That's an isolated exercise that basically works out only one muscle part. Safety is very important. Most people start really crazy. They start working out really hard and they get really serious and then something happens and, um, and they're out of the game, they're, they're injured. So the most important thing about working out and having a program is to exercise very conservatively with a very low weight until you can feel that you, you have enough experience. And form, some people do the wrong form and they injure themselves. When you, whenever you stand or even when you sit, you should make sure you're standing and sitting in an army military position where your shoulder blades are touching each other and you can do the curls, you can do your bench press, even laying down. You're, Shoulder blades should always be close together. Uh, so form is very important. And that's something you learn only with a good trainer, maybe watching some of my videos, but you have to really be aware of that because I see people working out for years where they haven't really learned form. Do not overtrain. Uh, overtraining means working out too much because you're gonna feel more tired the day after. You eventually may even get sick because it really is not good for the immune system to overtrain. You start decreasing your testosterone, your cortisol goes up, it messes up your hormones too. So don't overdo it, just three, four times a week, an hour. And if you don't feel more energized when you finish the workout, you're overtraining. If you're feeling more tired, you're really overtraining. Um, before the workout, as I said, you do a pre-workout drink or snack. And after workout, uh, you come home within the 20 minutes or so. Some people need to take a shower because some people create, a, especially if you're on hormones like testosterone replacement, you need to protect your skin and make sure you don't break out. And have a post-workout post meal, snack, or a shake. If you are not lactose intolerant, you can have whey protein. Uh, I usually just have a snack with uh, even a tuna sandwich or a chicken sandwich, something quickly within the 20 to 40 minutes after your workouts. That's really when you're, you're requiring that much uh, uh, more nutrients for your glycogen intake. And um, you can find a lot of this information with more details in my three books, uh, Build to Survive, Testosterone, The Man's Guide, and uh, Shortcut uh, to Shape, Shortcut to Shape, and at my website, nelsonvirgil.com. And please stay tuned because I'm gonna have a few videos uh, showing nutritional advice, uh, supplement advice, and exercises of different types. So thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.